Lost generation, lost in the cost and the price for the playlist. Little bit of riddling, fill it in, fill it nil again. So I fill it with reeling and delirium. A little more librium, fill my equilibrium. I'm delirious, no, I'm serious. Black on my thoughts, my scars bring pain. These dark lords are big form, but let's not be named. Whoever sees this and subscribes right now, get a free snowflake. Keyboard warriors not included. What's going on, YouTube? It's Noxu, and we're back with our reaction series. So today, today, man, today is Friday. One of the greatest days of the week because we are back with more ERB. Now I know, I know, they have recently dropped a brand new battle and it wouldn't be right if we didn't do that today. We got Mansa Musa versus Jeff Bezos. Now listen guys, a quick announcement before we go any further. I've got to keep it real with you. I'm always going to keep it 100 on this channel. I've been getting questions about this. Why is it taking so long? How do I feel about the feature who's on it? And yes, as some of you know, as some of you have guessed, I am not a big fan of Screwface Jean. There's just some things that I've seen happen behind the scenes that he's just not someone, me personally, that I would trust or that I would want to go out of my way to support and to just put on the channel. Now that's how I feel. You might feel a different way. That's cool. But listen, at the end of the day, we're all here for ERB. I'm a huge fan of ERB. They made a decision for a reason to put him on this. So I feel like it's not right if I don't react to it. I have to let you know how I feel going into it. But you know, I, I'm an adult here. We can put our big boy pants on. We're here for the breakdowns. We're here for the analysis. We're here to check out the music. That's what you guys want. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do this one justice. So ERB, let's get into this. Step up to the plate. Let's see what you got. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Ah. I blaze Bezos, inflict inflammatory damage on i like the alliteration there with the b's and the consonants and then with the inflict inflammatory damage that's some nice word bending right there by screw coming in and it comes in with voila almost sounds french like voila but in this case voila because we know that Mansa was muslim so obviously he's going to use a muslim phrase by god in this case putting his hand on the holy quran you know their holy book they're equivalent to Christianity and Christians of putting their hand on the Bible, swearing of what he's about to do and the violence that he's about to commit. And I like how this beat, man, it just has a little bit of kind of like a take them to church sort of feel. The way that the keys hit at the beginning and everything just kind of builds. And then you have just the drums pop and then the drop in at the perfect time. Here we go, man. We're here for the ride. Just let it build. Drums in. Drop. By the holy Quran, I lay my hand upon I blaze Bezos, inflict inflammatory damage on Amazon, burn it down like when they put the cattle on The hottest on the map, since the Atlas of Catalan Ooh, that is dope CGI right there Since the Atlas of Catalan Now the Atlas of Catalan, because uh, Monza was during, he ruled during medieval times So, you know, while in Europe they're running around Learning how to wash their hands and defend themselves from the plague uh, He was just balling out down in West Africa. So I think if I read this right, there's an image of him on the map and sort of celebrating his riches and his power at the time. So that's why, you know, this map he's referencing here and since he's hot with it. And then obviously we got the environmental bars, which I thought was great wordplay playing off of the Amazon, like the Amazon rainforest and the huge problem that we have now with the deforestation of the Amazon. And one of the things that is a huge part of that deforestation is clearing out land for cattle grazing and cattle pastures. So clever wordplay off of Jeff Bezos, owning Amazon as we know, and then the Amazon rainforest is pretty back. And then playing off of the Blaze Bezos, like blazing the trees and the forest in the Amazon. Nice wordplay. I'm laying the blows you can't dodge. This ain't sales tax. I left a prince in the Sahara. I know how to <laughs> Great wordplay. Obviously, playing off of lyrically, he's packing heat with his guns. The only thing that Bezos is packing is a tape gun because we know what Amazon specializes in shipping and logistics. And well, they own an entire ecosphere at this point in time, don't they? I mean, they are just ridiculous, their stock price. And then more really good wordplay landing blows you can't dodge, like sales tax. 
Amazon notoriously dodges sales tax. There was a huge case against them in terms of them not charging per state by state basis for sales tax and not not paying state sales tax. And there's a big story on that. And yeah, I mean that they're like any multinational corporation, constantly shifting their reporting where they conduct business and do things to avoid having to actually pay what they should most likely properly pay for stuff. Typical rich greed. Bullshit, we're used to that, aren't we? So, and then we have yet another wordplay trying to, wow, I mean, it's just like bar after bar after bar in terms of the wordplay and swinging with the punches. Screw is wasting no time on this one. Right, he knows hot tracks, like hot musical tracks, but also the Sahara Desert, one of the hottest deserts in the world. He crossed the Sahara Desert on a big pilgrimage when he went to Mecca. So him crossing it also did a lot of trading, right? He was a merchant as well. They were a very wealthy empire, wealthy nation. So hot tracks across the Sahara. Nice work, buddy. I love the beat switch right there. You have a full percussion switch and then... Screw just comes in kind of with that swagger. And best wordplay so far, you got that Al Gore rhythm, that computer algorithm. What is it, like the A9 algorithm that helps to dictate, you know, which product should be featured on Amazon. They use a lot of algorithms in their logistics as well in terms of taking inventory and processing. So he's playing off of that, but then he's playing on Al Gore. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Mr. Gore, fun fact about him is that he invented the internet. Yeah, you can you can look that up. It's true. 150 million percent he invented the internet so playing off of that he's also uh thin kind of nerdy looking white guy doesn't look like he has much rhythm at all al gore rhythm and then burst dorks like dot com he had a huge dot com bubble wow we're getting older now in terms of time but you know when all these dot com companies blew up everybody wanted a piece of the action they thought they were the next big thing and then that's the dot-com bubble that crashed. A lot of their stock prices just fell. Realized that a lot of them weren't actually that good businesses in the end. But arising from the ashes, you did have better companies that took advantage of the online internet world, such as Amazon. Dot-com bubbles when I hit them. Nah, you can't spit. You got that algorithm. Here's a nugget of advice to get your union problems handled. Want workers that don't piss? Hire some camels. I expand the horizon. Want workers that don't piss? Hire some camels. Fun fact for you guys about the hump of a camel. What is actually stored in there? Comment below. Because it's not water, even though a lot of us think that. But camels can go an extraordinarily long time without having to piss and without really needing, needing water. So playing off of that, Amazon has had huge problems in the past, like, again, many greedy multinational corporations and that they mistreat their workers. And there's been stories of how they manage their warehouse staff and especially their delivery truck drivers in terms of not giving them adequate breaks to even go piss so you had like horror stories of some of them like pissing in bottles on the way even buying diapers so they wouldn't get in trouble relating to pissing so i like how you know Monza is playing off of that but then what's really clever is in keeping with theme of you know his background and relating to the desert and desert imagery and Africa and, and camels. So he uses that as a part of his diss. Again, clever metaphor. Instead of grabbing like something abstract and using that to make a metaphor within a diss him, use something within sort of his timeline and his storyline. Hit him. Nah, you can't spit. You got that algorithm. Here's a nugget of advice to get your union problems handled. Want workers that don't piss? Hire some camels. I expand the horizon with libraries and mosques while you chopped off the top of all the mom and pop shops. All you invited was the gap between the haves and have not now they order in a living in your cardboard box at amazon our product <laughs> listen you're not gonna tell me that screw can't rap man there were some great punch lines i mean he's he's really built for battle rapping he's he's built for those punch lines the way that his delivery is how he can just set up lines and he's got a lot of personality with his delivery so he can just deliver those final punch lines and really have them sink home so i like playing off of the cardboard box in that sense of like if you're homeless living in a cardboard box but also the cardboard boxes of amazon and again you have this mega corporation critique that amazon has just destroyed mom and pop shops they've just destroyed 
independent business because everybody wants to go to them for their ease of accessibility for all their cheaper products you know they can hold and monopolize a lot of markets why am i struggling to speak today i swear i played monopoly before and i collected 200 for pass and go monopolize monopolize got it let's see if there's anything else that i miss that, no, the haves and the have-nots, like extending the gap between the rich and the poor. I mean, look at the amount of money that Bezos has. If he gave away all the money that he owns, then all of us would be pretty damn wealthy. Let's put it that way. Chopped off the top of all the mom and pop shops. All you widened was the gap between the haves and have-nots. Now they order in a living in your cardboard box. I'm going to take a moment to say something important that I do very much believe in. When you need something, when you go shopping, Try, if you can, to buy local, to buy independent, to buy from smaller mom and pop shops, to buy from local businesses, if you can, because it really does go a long way. I think it's very important to support local, you as a consumer. We don't think we have much of a voice, but we do. And your biggest voice is your purchasing power and what you choose to buy and who you choose to support. And if you don't support local, if you don't support independent, much is the same way with music, with independent artists and creators, then eventually we'll all go away and we'll cease to exist. Ah, what's going on? Hang on. Sorry, guys. Had a problem with my recording device. I think we got it fixed now. So, anyways, hopefully this is where we stop. Let's keep it rolling. While you chopped off the top of all the mom and pop shops, all you widened was the gap between the haves and have not. Now they order in a living in your cardboard box. At Amazon, our product research is phenomenal, but I've never heard your story, and I own Audible, so go take some more. <laughs> what? what is this voice by Lloyd? I mean, I guess he's, he's playing up to the nerdy Bezos vibe, but nowadays, I you, you could hardly call the jacked, you know, Mega Man version of Jeff Bezos nerdy, but early Bezos, yeah, so interesting cadence and voice choice kind of threw me off for a second i honestly didn't really process the bars hang on Product research is phenomenal but i've never heard your story and i own audible so go right right never heard your story again you poll the majority of people watching this battle a lot of them have not heard of Mansa musa unfortunately during that time like i said while we were learning you know what soap is after you go poo poo and, oh, no, it might spread disease and maybe we need proper sewer systems and things such as that running around Europe. Uh, you had great African empires, wealthy African nations that don't get as much shine in the history books, that don't get as much time. Unfortunately, especially for Mansa, he was before the printing press was invented. Uh, there's not a lot that was written and recorded of him. Arabic travelers and merchants did more of that. Storytelling word of mouth spreading, but obviously that gets exaggerated and tilted throughout the years. But yeah, definitely not as much shine and limelight. So clever wordplay by Bezos playing off of that, playing off of Audible, which is audio books, which they own. So literally he's never heard his story. Also in the great scheme of things, he's basically calling him unimportant. And Amazon does have fantastic product research. That is, that is a swagger. On our product research is phenomenal, but I've never heard your story. And I Listen to the change. There's like this little synth in the background. It sounds kind of computerized. I think it's so fitting for Bezos coming in. Own Audible. So go dig some more gold there, Kanye West Africa. I'm hotter than the soundtrack to Battlestar Galactica. Better <laughs> trade blow. <laughs> Oh, that's quite an interest. Just smash through all the boxes at his warehouse. Also, don't think we missed that at his warehouse is now they're going totally automated. There's not even people there running anything. Yeah. Bezos is bringing advanced AI to the world. Fuck people, right? <laughs> Battlestar Galactica line. I thought that was a little bit cheesy, but it kind of matches with Bezos' cheesy character. And then also the Kanye West Africa, right? Digging for gold because Matsumusa Musa was known for being incredibly wealthy, digging for gold. And then also playing off of the Kanye West having a song called Gold Digger. So there you go. Kanye West Africa. Matsumusa Musa from West Africa. We got it. With Jesse Jeff Bates. Bring it back further. Better than the soundtrack to Battlestar Galactica. Never trade blows with Jesse Jeff Bezos. Egghead with a huge set of waves. <laughs> <A thermal. laughs> oh, this is making me laugh so much. Egghead with a huge set of huevos, but actually huevos in Espanol means eggs. So playing off of eggs, playing off of his egghead, but he's got a big pair of balls. It's not ERB if we don't 
talk about dick size and dick jokes somewhere along the way. And then Jazzy Jeff Bezos, shout out to the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, DJ Jazzy Jeff, work with Will Smith. Shout out to Philly in the building. Let's go. With Jazzy Jeff Bezos, egghead with a huge set of wavos. I serve a people on the web to Spider Man. <laughs> you rap like a soccer ball, that's why you roll with caravan. <laughs> You're overrated. That's probably my favorite wordplay from Bezos so far. Soccer mom, caravan soccer mom, known for rolling around in a minivan or a Dodge caravan, for instance. Also a caravan, like a caravan traveling across the desert. Clever wordplay on caravan there. And then the other one was the uh, the web versus Spider-Man, like the interweb, the internet, invented by Al Gore. And then Spider-Man, we all get that one, right? Yeah, we can continue. Let's roll. The Spider-Man! You rap like a soccer mom, that's why you roll with caravan! You're overrated, like you leave economies inflated. You're about to taste some of that salt that you traded. <laughs> Again, uh, known for the wealth for being a merchant, right? So trading salt, but also you're going to taste salt like you're going to be very salty after this battle. And then there was a play on inflating the economy. Now, there's a story of uh, when he went on his pilgrimage, Mansa to Mecca. He stopped in Egypt. He stopped in Cairo. And he was just like walking around like a pimp through the streets and just basically dropping gold bars for paying everything with like how you like that oh here's some gold right and he apparently used so much and again this is where we talk about storytelling and spread by word of mouth we don't know how much is true how much is fable but as the story goes you know he spent so much gold that he just it totally inflated the economy within egypt and this was a trademark of him just having just so much wealth outstanding wealth that he would just spend and blow and yeah it would just wreak havoc on localized economies the spider-man you rap like a soccer ball that's why you roll with caravans you're overrated i tell you what man this is there is so much depth nowadays i feel like to the later erbs like when we did the ragna one so much pausing that i'm doing guys you know we pause and break down a lot but i feel like man you really got to be turned on they just they really pack so much into every line like you leave economies inflated you're about to taste some of that salt that you traded so long term playing giving your wealth away because now i feed your whole country for the price of a cup of coffee per day so bow to me like you did to the king of time okay that was mean yep that was mean of trading your wealth away what's the price of that interesting critique from billionaire and one of the richest men in the world jeff bezos is he the richest man in the world he might actually be i don't know saudi princes have anything to say about that mm, i mean he's definitely up there anyways there's been a number of extremely wealthy individuals who sign up to various pledges to give away so much of their money. They're very, they, they very much believe in philanthropy. Jeff Bezos, other end of the spectrum. And his critique of that is that he's thinking long term. Why just give all my money away? Instead, I'll invest in things that could help humanity in his mind in the future, such as his space program and building rocket ships and looking at the future of space and all that. So for him, he is giving more back to humanity by continuing to invest in business, invest in the economy versus just giving it away to various charities. That's how he sees it. And that's his critique of Monza because Monza, you know, built a lot of... Actually, no, Monza left a pretty damn good legacy. Well, maybe not because, again, not many people know it today, but, you know, what he tried to do which is true, you know, building cultural sites. What was it? Timbuktu. You had university built there. Was that a mosque? I can't remember. Anyways, building mosques and schools and education. So he, he, he did invest. He did try to give things away. But Bezos is still taking this as a critique for him. And then, oh, I'm going off on tangents. Taste some of that salt that you traded. So long term playing, giving your wealth away. Because now I feed your whole country for the price of a cup of coffee per day. I got so caught up in trying to explain that. I didn't even explain the hardest hitting bar. So you know all the charitable infomercials now. You know, help a starving child here in Africa. All you have to do is just give a little bit of money daily. You know, same price as a cup of coffee. That you're drinking on right there. So hence him playing off of that. What is the ultimate legacy that you've left? Because look at my legacy. I'm still building it. It's still going on. You don't have a legacy anymore. Burn. Like you did to the king of Cairo. Hang on. Country for the price of a cup of coffee per day. So bow to me like you did to the king of Cairo. You're about as hack as Saudis have hit my iPhone. You'll be more ashamed than <laughs> Bow to me like you did the king of Cairo. I don't... 
He didn't actually bow to the king of Cairo. Wasn't the story goes he refused to bow to him. He said he would only bow to God. So he did bow in the end, but he was bowing to God and not to the king of Cairo because that was one of his big swaggers right there. Uh, no, I'm not bowing to another king. And then you're a hack, like, you know, you just, you're, you're a gimmick. You're a hack, but also literally like computer hacking. And in this case, this is a true story. Uh, the Saudi prince was exchanging WhatsApp messages with Bezos. I mean, this one is wild because Bezos, a lot of people don't know, he also owns the Washington Post, right? During this time period, there was a correspondent and a writer for the Washington Post that, that was murdered. And there's been suspected speculation that there's been Saudi Arabian involvement. And then during this time period also, you have the Saudi, literally the Saudi prince messaging Bezos. They had like a good affair and then he sent him this link. And then it turned out to be hacking software, and they hacked his phone. And then months later, all of a sudden, the uh, National Enquirer, big tabloid magazine, comes out with all these stories and personal texts and messages from Bezos. And it's like, hmm, I wonder if we can connect the dots here of what went on. And then it also raises a lot of questions relating to the murder and intrigue and that. Wow, I feel like you could write a movie with that one. Cause now I feed your whole country for the price of a cup of coffee per day So bow to me like you did to the king of Cairo You're about as hack as Saudis have hit my iPhone You'll be more ashamed than when you accidentally killed your mom When Ooh. I make you shit your pants, where's the typers.com? Hey yo Lex loser Typers.com <laughs> Again, there's some very like obvious bars I feel like so far Monza has more of the wordplay but I don't know I think it's just it's the style it matches what Bezos is is doing with the whole character that he's exuding and and the role that Lloyd is playing in this one but shitting your diapers right like he's gonna make you shit your pants and also that's more clever because they bought diapers.com and I think they actually just like fired everyone and just crashed that in the end. They were like, nah, we don't want to do this anymore. And they got rid of diapers.com after they spent all that money buying it. Typical sort of Amazon tactic, you know, buy someone who is in a market that you want to get involved in, just assimilate them, take the best parts and get rid of the rest and move on from there. Rinse and repeat. And then accidentally killed your mom. Did Monza accidentally kill his mom? I'm not familiar with that one. Somebody gonna have to comment that one below. Accidentally killed your mom. When I make you shit your pants, where's the diapers.com? Hey, yo, Lex Loser. You look <laughs> like a villain at Comic Con. You getting ate up. You should have battled me on Ramadan. A harem of women. Level wordplay again right there. Ramadan, because during Ramadan, right? Muslim holiday, you, you fast. So you're getting ate up on this beat. So if you battle him on Ramadan when he was fasting, he couldn't eat you up. Nice wordplay there. And then also, Lex loser because with his bald head his egg head bezos definitely looks like the villain lex luther looks like a villain at comic-con so you don't actually look like the real villain you look like a fake villain at comic-con villain at comic-con you getting ate up you should have battled me on ramadan a harem of women's what i had on my staff you married <laughs> one woman jeff and she cut you in half <laughs> i mean so true uh mckenzie his wife they finally got divorced, and she became like the third richest woman in the world. Again, you got more wordplay jokes going on down there. A harem on his staff. So screw right there is saying, look, man, I got a bunch of women. You had one, and you got screwed over by her. How do you like that? And then also the staff, like on his staff, like on his corporate staff, on his team, but also literally on his staff down there. Part that shit like Moses. Pick the peck of you married one woman, Jeff, and she cut you in half. <laughs> David Pecker picked a pecker, you peed a pig. Now your new girl. David Pecker picked a peck. <laughs> oh, David Pecker, again, the National Enquirer. We talked about this, and, you know, they just ran a smear campaign on Bezos, and apparently he had a lot of lewd photos of him. And, yeah, that kind of goes in with that story. I like the play on Peter Piker. Peter Piker? Good goodness, Knox. Get your wordplay right today. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. How many pickle peppers did Peter Piper pick? Yeah, all right, that works. So he's playing off of that. Nice bending of all the P sounds there. Nice delivery from Screw. Battle me on Ramadan. A harem of women's what I had on my staff. You married one woman, Jeff, and she cut you in half. <laughs> David Pecker picked a peck of your Peter Pig. Now your new girl got them feeding me Seymour lips. And it turns out her own... Oh... Oh, my brain's not working. The feed me see more lips because she's she's got big lips. Looks like she's been injecting something all up in there in the plastic surgery department. But the feed me see more. What movie is that from? Oh, this is before when I was born. Goodness. Oh, 
Oh, man, I really want that one, too. Somebody's going to have to comment below. Oh, man. I can picture it because it's the plant. And feed me, Seymour. And it's... Oh, come on. More lips. And it turns out her own brother was the snitch. Woo, fix your face. No wonder you bought Twitch. <laughs> now let me really... Amazon owns Twitch. He's saying Bezos has a twitchy face. No wonder you bought Twitch. And again, like the woo, and just the, he, his delivery is so good for battle rap and so good just for landing some of these punchlines. It just suits him so well. Woo, fix your face. And your brother was a snitch. Or her brother was a snitch. I mean, there's a lot of links to the Saudi Arabian prince and a lot of leaks from that. But, but there was also further leaks from his now ex-wife and her brother leaking a bunch of stuff that she apparently gave him and shared with the press. No wonder you bought Twitch. Now let me really break it down because there's more to him. He ain't a Bezos. His real name is Jorgensen. <laughs> but daddy love He ain't a Bezos. His real name is Jorgensen. You ain't a gangster. His real name's Clarence. And <laughs> we got like eight mile battle raps going there. And uh, yeah, Bezos. Uh, Bezos was not his name. His name was Jorgensen. And then he... Got a new daddy, because his first daddy, his original daddy, left him. Left him and his mom. And then a uh, new dad came in, and Jeff took up his name. So he took up Bezos. There's more to him. He ain't a Bezos. His real name is Jorgensen. <laughs> but daddy loved you. You hear the little string instrument in the background? I don't know what type of instrument that is. Maybe someone can comment below, but that is clever. You got Screw playing it, and you've got it in the back of the mix in the production. There's more to him. He ain't a Bezos. His real name is Jorgensen. <laughs> but daddy loved unicycles more than him. So we rolled down. Now that's a blue origin. Take one small step towards it. <laughs> oh. That might be the best diss of the whole battle so far. That, that is painful. Daddy loves unicycles more than him. So there's this uh, biography written on Bezos, and then they went and tracked down his original father, come to find that he's uh, riding unicycles around, unicycle, unicycles around at the, uh, the circus, and he also owns a bicycle shop. So he literally ran away and went and joined the circus and left his family. Isn't that irony? So he's playing off of that, and then he says that's a blue origin. Blue is in dismal. That's so upsetting. That's sad. That's blue. Blue origin, his origin story, Jeff Bezos' origin story. But also, this is where the wordplay is very clever here. Blue origin is the name of Bezos' futuristic space rocket ship company. So we rolled down, now that's a blue And then rolled out. See how he does the rolled out, playing off of the bicycle unicycle scheme. Origin, take one small step towards a different profit. Because these days, you're just as cocky as your rocket. I'm the cream of the crap. Yeah. Got more dick jokes there. And his rocket looks like a big old cock. Yeah. Step to a different prophet. The prophet Muhammad. We got more Muslim Islamic bars there. But then also P-R-O-F-I-T. A different prophet like monetary prophet. So you have P-R-O-P-H-E-T. That prophet versus monetary prophet. I'm on top. I'm ice cold. This Muslim just served you. Allah mo. What's that lyrically legal? I'm a what? Hang on. Profit, cause these days you just as cocky as your rocket. I'm the cream of the crop. I'm on top. I'm ice cold. This Muslim just served you. I love mo. Okay. All right. The cream of the crop. I'm on top. I'm ice cold. A la mode. When you serve something, a la mode. Cream. Ice cream goes on top. So when it is cold, he is cold on top. At first, when I heard that, I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna have to bring this back because it sa it sounded like a cornier punchline that like Bezos were used. But then when you think about it, it's more intricate than that because he's got the cream of the crop, like him rising to the top. But also the ice cream literally goes on top of the pie. You serve something a la mode, and then he's an a la, you know, all praise. Allah, A L L A H. He's in Allah go mode there. Okay. I'm on top. I'm ice cold. This Muslim just served you. Allah mode. <sighs> Camera's gonna die. Sorry, guys. Camera died, but we're back. Let's keep it rolling. I'm lyrically legal. I'm, I'm ice cold. This Muslim just served you. Allah mode. What's that lyrically legal? I'm relentless. African verse immune. But what are the African verse immune? He's lethal. We got like. Vaccine type of bars there. Sick bars. Musa, I'm. Why is everything capitalized? 
M I L L I R A V I Milleravi Milleravi <laughs> Holy shit <laughs> Really All right What the hell was her name Oh man I got a good memory but not that good Um Milleravi right this was like this this code that they had at Amazon. So there was this analyst from Lehman Brothers who at the time, this is before Amazon started turning a profit, when Bezos was really investing in infrastructure, investing in logistics, and they were getting ready to turn into the you know multi-billion dollar company that they are today, trillion dollar company. Jesus, what do I, I mean? They're just, anyways, anyways. So she wrote the scathing report and said, they're going to be out of cash flow within the next four quarters. And they're just going to go bankrupt after that. And Amazon was like, Hang on a second. You have not done the books properly. You have not even looked at our business model. Bezos came out, predicted, hey, by Q4, we're going to start turning a profit. This bitch is wrong, basically. And one of the things that they did with the press release, I can't remember if it was on an earnings report or not, but it was Milo Ravi, right? They had just this encrypted sort of statement about, you know, investing, blah, 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 and all these big words like this disc right here. But in this case, it was a giant acronym for Milleravi, which basically means you don't fucking know a damn thing about us. <laughs> that, that was a different uh, meaning, but it was something along the lines of, yeah, like you just you suck. Basically, you, you don't know what you're talking about and you have miscalculated by millions of dollars. Milleravi, very clever. Very good. Wow, we got to give points to uh, Lloyd and the ERB team for that I'm one. I'm ice cold. This Muslim just served you. Allah, mo. Well, so I'm lyrically legal. I'm relentless. African first immune. If I wanted to waste my life a desert spice, I'd watch too. What do we give McKinsey? 40 billion? So what? <laughs> Earning every penny back only took me a month. I went from... <laughs> oh, that is a flex. Yeah. Gave my wife all that money and I still earned that back in no time. And then playing off of the, uh, the desert spice like trading for Desert Spice, like we talked about with Musa being a merchant and uh, you know being known for trade, his empire, but also playing off of Spice from the movie Dune, a key part of the movie Spice. And right there, he's just basically saying, yeah, you, you're boring, like like Dune. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry. 40 billion, so what? Earning every penny back only took me a month. I went from hard to dork to slick orc physique. Now I'm Lord of the Rings. Take a pee. Three years to trip to... You know, I like my Lord of the Rings bars. He went from Hobbit dork to orc physique, you know, like some of the jacked orcs that Saruman bred and created that could move in daylight. I like that play on there because, yeah, I mean, he's he's fucking, he's mega man. Now he's definitely jacked. And then he plays off of Lord of the Rings. And I love the way he does it because the ring, you hear like the doorbell ringing and they literally bought ring, which has, you know, the doorbell cameras. When someone comes up to your door, you just log into the app and you can see them and see who is there so he plays off of that and then you see him looking at himself on the phone after ringing the doorbell nice Flick orc physique now i'm lord of the rings take a pee <laughs> three years to trip to mecca man you must be tripping one click i'll get you there overnight with free shipping i'm hard corporate <laughs> obviously different time periods technology was not as advanced then so you know i, I like that flex because yeah amazon prime Next day delivery, baby. Okay. Must be tripping. One click, I'll get you there overnight. With free shipping. I'm hard. Speaking of Prime, we haven't had any plays on Amazon Prime, have we? No Prime. Becca, bars. man, you must be tripping. One click, I'll get you there overnight. With free shipping. I'm hard corporate. Top tier of the Forbes list. You couldn't even hit top tier in Civ 6. I'm schooling you. Civ 6. Uh, more nerd core bars right there. Civilization 6. Yeah. I guess the Mali were ranked as a civilization, and they obviously weren't ranked as a top-tier civilization in that game when you build up civilizations and play off of that. Uh, obviously, what was the uh, the hardcore top-tier of the Forbes list? Yeah, because he's one of the most wealthy men in the world. click, I'll get you there overnight. With free shipping, I'm hardcore. Yeah. Top-tier of the Forbes list. You couldn't even hit top-tier in Civ 6. I'm schooling you like Timbuktu, eating you like Whole Foods. Your ship is still just like the dude who came before you. You ate. <laughs> he came before you. Oh, eating you up like Whole Foods because shout out to Whole Foods, man. A little bit more expensive if you want to go grocery shopping there. But hey, a lot of organic stuff. They bought Whole Foods because, again, you know, it's simple. You want to emerge in a market you want to be a part of, just 
buy someone who would be your competitor. And that's what they did. They bought Whole Foods, literally ate them up, get the word play on that. And then also hardcore, hard corporate that I talked about that I couldn't catch before. He's hardcore, hardcore corporate. Yes, he is super corporate. And we got the schooling you like Timbuktu bars, right? Timbuktu, famous. You know, we've all heard Timbuktu probably in American speech, colloquialism at some point in time, like shipping you out to Timbuktu, which we're like, wow, that's the middle of nowhere. But Timbuktu was actually a part of the Mali Empire at the time. So that goes even deeper, those bars. Two, eating you like Whole Foods. Your ship is still just like the dude who came before you. you do it. Yeah, and what was that? That's actually how uh, he became Mansa Musa, isn't it? What was his name before? Kida. Kaida, wasn't it? I can't remember. But... Essentially, the one who was ruling before him went out on this voyage and this expedition and he never came back. And then Mansa Musa was like, all right, I'm going to take the throne now. It's mine, bitches. But two, eating you like Whole Foods. Your ship is still just like the dude who came before you. If you ain't fire, can't hold the candle to me. I got the flywheel flows. I revolutionized delivery. You tell me. Oh, man, you ain't fire like the Amazon fire stick. You couldn't hold a Kindle like the Amazon Kindle or kindling a fire. Like, I'm a greater fire. You're just a small, insignificant speck, right? And then he talks about the flywheel flows, revolutionized delivery, like rapid delivery, but also business delivery. What does the story go about the, the flywheel sort of method? I think Basil's put this down on a napkin. And basically, in essence, it's, you know, invest in the consumer experience. Invest in your catalog and your product. So when Amazon was getting started, especially they weren't just promoting Amazon products. They brought in a lot of third parties and their products as well because they wanted to give the consumer more choice, even if they were selling the same products, even if they had competitors and they would encourage them. They said, look, you know, sign contracts with us. We will warehouse it for you. We'll store it. We'll handle the logistics and ship it out. So therefore they had a very strong supply chain as they develop over time, they develop better logistics. And what they would do is another part of that flywheel method is reinvest, reinvest, reinvest. Instead of like giving out dividends to stockholders, you know, instead of paying out cash, take that cash and reinvest in the whole wheel and in the whole system. And it's one of the ways that it just kept expanding and turning and turning and turning like a flywheel. Nice. I'll be beauty like my tax bill. Wheel flows, a revolutionized delivery. Your talent's on the beauty like my tax bill. Alexa, what do we have that he lacks? <laughs> oddly puny again we have the tax evasion bars that we talked about before and then it's not an amazon battle with bezos if we don't have alexa who listens to us all shout out to the nsa anyways if we don't have alexa saying he lacks skills <laughs> like Lloyd shipping out the boxes. This video and this leak are sponsored by no Who was that? Was that high res? This video and this leak. That's Sherwin or P who is that? A sponsored by Nord Vipin. It's Nord VPN. What's a VPN? And who are you? I'm Charles Babbage. I invented the computer, and VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. <clears throat> mm. A VPN keeps your internet connections secure, protects your devices from prying eyes, and preserves your anonymity. Nord VPN is safe, blazing fast, and lets you change your virtual location with one click. I don't get it. Let's say you're hunting wild animals on a camping trip. Go on. You don't want a bunch of thieves knowing your location. I most certainly Facts. do not. You want the freedom to access any animal you choose. I like the big ones. And you... <laughs> Teddy the Bull Moose. I love that play. Want your internet provider to be able to throttle your bandwidth. The next thing you know, they'll be trying to keep your brain inside a damn jar. Try NordVPN free for 30 days today. Go to nordvpn.com slash epic. Use promo code epic for a two-year plan and one additional month free. Support the rap battles, secure your data, and explore your world with privacy. Yeah! Nice. And that was it. Hey, I'm always going to let the ads play. You know we're going to support ERB in the channel. Wow. Man, there was so much to unpack. This was a very long reaction. I don't want to spend too much more time on this one. I'm going to have to pick a winner, though. I thought Bezos really brought it back around with that second verse. But in terms of overall, I'm going to have to give it to Monza, man. I just I thought he had better wordplay 
and just, yeah, fair, that algorithm line, algorithm, very, very good wordplay, nice punch lines, nice swings, man. I mean, some of Bezos, he had some good swings, but I felt like his punch lines were more obvious, whereas there was just more to unpack, really, with a lot more of what Screw was doing and saying. So, yeah, I'm going to give it to Monza, but that was a great battle. ERB. You are Knoxville certified. So if you guys liked today's video, listen guys, if you did, please hit that subscribe button, notifications on. As always, stay safe, stay positive. Look, I'll catch you again. I'm out.